Good day. So I want to talk to you about this book. This guy, really good. Um, Tillman Fred Teta. Yeah, if I pronounce your name wrong, sorry, man. But you know, I gotta say, I really love this book. And I took some notes about the book that I just wanted to share with you. So my channel, as you know, is about DevOps, IT, infrastructure, all the things that you have to, to do. And I'm always looking for ways to improve. But one of the things that a lot of people don't actually talk to you about improving is your soft skills. It's the soft skills that makes the difference. You see, anyone can learn Python, anyone can learn Java, anyone can learn, learn, learn technical stuff. But one of the technical aspects of the job is actually dealing about people. You know, the 80-20 rule is always at play. And if you want to know what this book has got anything to do about DevOps or anything to do about your daily job, it's a lot. It's about customer service. It's about trying to understand your team, trying to understand your relationship with people and how you stand. And at the end of the day, the only reason why I'm able to get contracts or jobs or clients pay me a thousand pounds you know you know let's break it down to us dollars a thousand us dollars a day or you know some clients paying up to twenty thousand us dollars a month one client is because they feel heard they feel understood they feel as though that you know even this guy can deliver, but I feel as though that he deliver what it is I want. And that's, that's the aspect. So let me, let me just talk to you about some of the notes of this. So one of his chapters talks about scrambled eggs, not actually how to make the friggin' thing, right? You know, let's not be so lapsed cool about it. He's talking about if your client, he, so a little bit more about Tillman so that you get the essence of it. Tillman is a business module. He has multiple businesses. Uh, one of those are is a restaurant. The other one is basically, I think it's NFL. No, it's, it's basketball. It's his career in the front. And what it is is that this guy has gone from come from nothing up to something. So in his business, if a customer comes up to, the, or to a waiter or something like that and asks for scrambled eggs, and it's 12 o'clock during the day or something like that, one o'clock during the day, and the client just wants scrambled eggs. Who gives a shit why? Just, that's what they want. What will happen is, is that, you know, his waiters are, are automatically told, look, don't say no, just get the scrambled eggs for the customers. And although we have to replenish the stock, or probably have to go to get eggs, more eggs the next day, the customer is happy to pay probably 10 to 15% more than what scrambled eggs are. Why? because you've given what they want. Look, people, we live in a society today where everything is given to you at a drop of a hat. You know, you want to buy a car. Dude, you want to buy a car today, Mercedes, for example. You go online to Mercedes, you tell it what it want, what you want, like the color of the car, the trim, the top up alloys, everything. And you get it all, you know, catered to your needs and delivered within, what, three months? You know, the world's changed. Amazon's changed that, you know, where you can think about any book given by anyone and it's available. Now, if it's not available by, by Amazon, somebody else buys it. But the point being is, is that meeting customer expectations is a must. This guy talks about that. The other thing is, is that, you know, he's about know your numbers. So, you know, if you're going to, to um, if you're going to pitch a sale and let's say for example, my daily rate is a thousand pounds, a thousand US dollars a day. And that client basically goes, look, I like you. I like your company. I feel understood by you, but I can't do a thousand pounds or a thousand US dollars a day. What can you do for me? And you say to yourself, look, 
the reason why I could justify a thousand pounds a day is because you live in or you know the business is let's call it some some places in London I can't remember the name of the street where uh, hires is is on and stuff like that but if you're going to stay by the customer because you're going to do long business hours it's how you actually do your numbers you, you tell the customer look the hotel that I have to stay stay by here is 150 to 200 pounds a night um, you know food around here the cheapest meal that I could probably get is like 20 pounds for a meal you know what I mean and you tell the customer look for me to get train from where I am to to this destination costs X amount fuel being at home all these bills so if you know your numbers right and when it comes to a client that is challenging you on price you can actually justify why it is that it's going to cost a thousand pounds a day or a thousand US dollars a day you know because and you're showing sincerity and transparency uh, transparency sorry I keep thinking about transparency that company that I recommended the other day really good crew hope you checked them out on my last video you know if you need anything done give those guys a call anyways getting back it's just it's just the transparency about things that helps you you know and that's why he says know your numbers so you're gonna make a deal you gotta know your numbers know your five percent this five percent is the best you see the thing is is that in our industry in our standards and everything we have this um, belief that we have to be a hundred percent perfect to get from something to nothing and before we can actually start going somewhere like I'm learning Python at the moment and I'll talk to you about the books I've used and I believe that I got enough to make a difference you know I could edit a code I could run something I could do something with Python I feel confident now a lot of people who in my position will feel as though look dude I need to have complete the book to of, of feel proficient in Python before I can actually say that I've got Python experience. Just like, dude, phew, why? You know, just get the basics of what Python is. Be honest with the person that you're talking with, and you know, because basically what will happen is is that you could complete the whole book about Python or course and feel as though that you're ready, but when you're actually challenged with that particular issue of code, you wouldn't even solve it. You, you still, you would use the basics of what you've done. So why wait until you're perfect? So the way around that is basically you get involved with something and you, you, you change and you adapt 5%. So it's like my videos today, dude, I used to do this by my phone at one point and it was like, you know, it was like pixely. And then, you know, I upgraded my camera, then I got a better mic, then I've, you know, adjusted the lighting, got better background, but I, I improve, but you have to have self-criticism. So for him, for him improving his restaurant says, is that he goes, right, you know, how can I improve my service? So if a waiter is actually gonna get a person a drink, has the waiter look to give him the customer the coaster? Is there a napkin involved? Has the cut? Has the waiter actually have clean aprons on? Um, those kind of things. Those are improvements, slight improvements every single day. Five percent, not one percent, five percent. Because when you improve five percent, five percent is making that that effort. Playing five percent. Um, one of these dream big and don't lose hope in your dreams. Awesome, you know what I mean. We all have to have a big dream, and if you're not aiming high. What's going to happen is, is that you're all going to be coasting mediocre and you don't want that, you know, for any organization. Now, here's a tip. Here's an interview tip for you. If you go to an organization, all right, one of the things they ask you is where do you see yourself in five years? I hate that question, but it's one of the questions. They say, where do you see yourself in five years? And you would give them some spiel about you want to be an architect or if you want to be a better DevOps engineer or you want to be a director and everything. But then you turn it around. You ask them, what's this organization's big dreams, big goals? Not where are you going to be in five years? Because who knows? <laughs> you know, no one expected COVID. 
Whereas his big dreams for the organizations gives you a better answer. So there's a book on better, better questions as well, but big dreams is important. This one I love the most. Leaders listen first. That's really important. You know why? Because if you want to know about where you stand with someone, it's if you're talking and they listen and they're listening not to respond but listening to hear your side of things that's the person you want to speak with work with work for work alongside whatever but a leader listens not listen to respond they listen to then help all right be a great teacher I'm an advocate of that, you know, as I said before, I've, I, you know, I think it's, no, I've just took up another client, 16, 16 today. So I'm mentoring 16 people, making a difference in their, in their lives, in their world, for the world and everything of the sort. And, you know, it's really important for you to be a good teacher. And we all have something to teach, you know, no matter how big or how small, there's always something to teach. Adapt to change sooner. This is important, you know. A lot of people go, nah, it's just like, I talk to a lot of people, man, about um, the way how the world's changed. Work from home is definitely, you know, I'm seeing permanent jobs here um, being advertised for, um, you know, up to 120 grand, 100% remote. So how is someone going to compete, right? Where they're going to offer 140 grand but you got to be in the office 80 20 or you know whatever split it is well if i could get a job at 120 grand 100 percent remote working as a, a devops leader or a director and it's a high pressure role but you want me to come in and i have to pay for commute risk of being sick you know how are you going to compete with that? So those companies who are not adapting to change sooner, like you got to be quick, you know, don't be surprised that it's really hard for you to get people. Don't be surprised that it's really hard for, you know, you have to be, end up paying more and listen to recruiters. Oh, I got to do a video about recruitment right? because, you know, we've got a new issue about where it's just like, it's not the recruiter who's at fault when it comes to trying to get candidates is actually the friggin' clients not listening and not seeing what's there. You know, it's you guys who've got to listen. Yeah, 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 I know. I will listen to you, but you've got to see the difference in the world. Anyway, this one, this one's a money maker. You ready? Take no out of your vocabulary take no now what this means is it's not like if the customer asks you while you're doing your code to stand on your head and you say no or at the last hour the customer goes you know we need everything so I had, a, I had this client right who we did a migration for everything and they wanted everything to move away from our template to Terraform and it was just like, okay, we've got one month left, left in this, in this, in this contract. You know, I've got two guys working here on the team and it's just like, how am I going to change everything from ARM template to Terraform? So I didn't say no. What I said was, is that I would love Jeff to change everything from ARM template to Terraform for you. And let's sit down and map it out, you know? So these are the things that we're gonna be able to do. Everything in your organization is gonna to have to change from what we've done, you know? The architecture for the infrastructure is the same, and so is the process for your software delivery life cycle and yada, yada, yada. But here's what's gonna to have to change. Your pipeline, your coding, you know, the people that we hand it over, we've taught them how to do our template, now we need to be able to tell them how to do Terraform. <clears throat> this is gonna probably cost you another three to six months. 
are you willing to do that? And he goes, wow, really? Just, yeah. You know, now he knows I'm sincere. He, kn I've already won the relationship with Jeff and Jeff knows, look, you know, Jude's not going to try and try and get a quick buck here. Jude actually wants to help. But I didn't say no. I say you're ridiculous and walk out the door. I justifiably show Jeff why it is that it's not a good idea at the point, right? So that, and that was pre-COVID. So probably next year, Jeff would give me a call back to say, can you come over and do the Terraform migration of code and blah, blah, blah. Or his team is already doing it, who knows? But point being is, is I didn't say no. What's another thing that I can actually say is, um, you know, the client goes, um, you know, can you change, can you swap out the Zuri native load balancer for uh, Nginx or, you know, another third party? And I don't, I don't go, and that's like in mid flight and through the deployment of the infrastructure. So I go, well, yeah, it is possible, but here are the ramifications of what will happen if we do, you know, we need that to go into dev first and test and pre-prod. And, you know, is this what the business wants? Is this compatible with what the application want? I'm trying to understand what it is. And it's just like, you know, Susan will then go, well, I got a nudge from a friend of mine who's in security and they recommended this firewall or this low balancer. You know, it's better for us to be able to have that. And I go, that's all well and good and fine. But have you realized the cost of that? Because it's not native to Azure, you have to actually buy that. And to troubleshoot that means that we, your internal team needs that skills and understanding. So Susan went, yeah, sure, okay, sure, I understand. And that's how it is. And yes, I want to implement it. And I go, sure, what we could do, the, here's the steps, here's the processes, here are the things that would change. Susan understood it, she got the ordered, and we went ahead. But we didn't say no. We just basically said, this is how you need to be able to get this done. So when someone or when a client comes out and they, they, don't, they don't say no, try to remove no from your vocabulary. Try to understand how to communicate why that's not a good thing to the client or how that would actually change and what changes are needed. That's what's important. So I've been Jude, this is Tillman. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you soon.